I have enjoyed nature since before I could stand up. I learned to canoe before I went to school. I climbed my first mountain at age nine. Before I went to college, I had climbed all 46 of the larger mountains in New Hampshire, many during the winter. I climbed my first active volcano at age 19, and since have skied the Alps, explored the Galapagos, rode my own raft through the Grand Canyon twice, and climbed the Grand Teton at the age of 63. Becoming a geophysicist allowed me to work in nature and get paid for it. What a life. As father of four children with six grandchildren, it's very important to me that they can enjoy nature and we all do our part to keep the world healthy now and in the future. I've been a scientist for more than 50 years, earning a PhD in geophysics at Columbia University in 1970. At the age of 31, I began leading a group of 40 PhD scientists and 100 staff. I'm widely published, earned two national awards for educating the public about science. I've chaired a committee at the White House, served on a committee for Vice President Gore, testified twice before Congress. My greatest passion is to understand science. I believe very strongly that good public policy needs to be illuminated by the best science available. We all must adapt to climate change. We depend on science to help us understand why the climate is changing and how we should adapt and how we might best work together to keep the world healthy. In 2006, while happily retired, living on the southern border of Grand Teton National Park and enjoying nature, I discovered on the internet excellent data from central Greenland showing that the most intense and persistent volcanism recorded in Greenland ice occurred precisely as the world was warming out of the last ice age. This made no sense because it's well known that all major explosive eruptions throughout recorded history have each caused global cooling for a few years. How in the world can volcanoes cause both cooling and warming? I examined the data in detail and decided that they were unusually clear. Building on more than 40 years of studying volcanoes, I had the instinct that if I could figure this enigma out, it could be very important. I decided to put aside most other things in my life, including my regular enjoyment of nature, to work full time trying to understand why climate changes. I ended up carefully re-examining all the major assumptions made in greenhouse warming theory and discovered several problems. Then as I pondered, th pondered thermal radiation, I began to realize we scientists might have made a fundamental mistake 150 years ago that when corrected suggests greenhouse warming theory may not even be physically possible. As I developed the ozone depletion theory of global warming, I found that it provides a clear, direct, and comprehensive explanation for detailed observations of global warming recently th and throughout Earth history. Join me as we try to understand why the world is warming and what we can do about it. It is extremely important to all life on Earth and to nature that we get this right. <laughs>